ena mana, ena reo, ena mata waka, tena koto, tena koto, tena tato kato. Ko Sally Peters toko ingoa. I'm very sorry not to be with you all at the conference today, but delighted to have been given this opportunity to make a short recording about some of my experiences with Tafariki. My Tafariki journey began back at the beginning when I was part of the advisory group for the draft of Tafariki. Much later, I became a member of the reference group for the New Zealand curriculum that was published in 2007, and I was one of the writers for the update of Tafariki. 2017. Currently I'm a member of the Curriculum Voices Group for the refresh of the New Zealand School Curriculum, bringing an early childhood perspective to that work. And I'm part of the Core Fiti Whakapai Maths team. As we all know and are celebrating today, Te was launched in 1993 in draft form and published in final form in 1996, being New Zealand's first early childhood curriculum. As we know, the early childhood curriculum was envisaged as a whariki, a woven mat with the principal strands and goals providing the framework for diverse settings to weave their curriculum. In 2007, when the school curriculum was rewritten, we were really keen to ensure there were strong links with te whariki. At that time, it was decided that the best way to do this was to show the alignment between the strands of te whariki and the key competencies at school. This diagram comes from the school curriculum document. As many of you will know, much of my work has been around the transition to school. And although this alignment was promising, in practice, it didn't always work terribly well. I ended up drawing this, which was showing that the alignment provided a potential bridge between the two documents, but the strength really depended on the connections being made by teachers, both early childhood and school teachers. They were the ones building the bridge between Te Whariki and the curriculum. In 2017, when Te Whariki was updated, the principal strands and the vision remained the same. It also remained a bicultural and bilingual document with the two pathways. However, you will have noticed that the, the Fariki diagram was changed. As it notes in the document, the Kōwhiti Whakapai Fariki symbolises the start of a journey that will take the traveller beyond the horizon. It's still a weaving of principles and strands, but looks somewhat different. This was actually an exciting development. Now, when the document's opened at the place where the two parts of the book meet, it can be seen that the Fariki is unfinished with the loose strands still to be woven. This acknowledges the child's potential and their ongoing educational journey and makes linking early childhood to school much easier. The new opening to Te Whariki provides a very different metaphor for continuity to what we had previously. Now it's seen that new learning is woven into the existing Whariki rather than a bridge needing to be provided between Te Whariki and the New Zealand curriculum. There's greater recognition that the realms of mana and the five strands of Te Whariki are a basis for learning and relevant across the lifespan, something that personally I feel very passionate about. So when we think about connecting early childhood to school, Te Whariki has a section on pathways where tables are provided to show some of the ways in which the key competencies values and learning areas of the New Zealand curriculum can be woven onto the learning outcomes of Te Whareke. The tables also show the weaving on for the Māori medium to Marotanga o Aotearoa. These tables serve as a starting place for exploring connect curriculum connections in more depth and are intended for both early childhood and school teachers. Here's an example from one of the tables. This one being for the strand belonging, mana whenua. You can see on one side the learning outcomes, in the middle an acknowledgement of the weaving, and then examples from the New Zealand curriculum that might be woven onto belonging. You can see not only the key competency participating and contributing, 
but also learning areas of social sciences and science. These tables are not intended to be exhaustive, but just a place that teachers might like to start. With 2017 Tafariki, much more support was provided online. I've shown here the Pathways and Transitions section, which I was part of developing, and there are lots of resources there for making those connections. For the first time in 2017, Tafariki got a TKI website with lots of other resources and further information. And now we find ourselves moving to a refresh of the New Zealand school curriculum. Tamatai Aho will be released in Term 3. There's already three refreshed learning areas and other ones to be developed. It's really important, I think, that those of us in early childhood are aware of and connected to and potentially giving feedback on the school curriculum. Here's the draft, which is available online. It's a very different document to the current NZC and well worth exploring in some depth. You can see here, although this, the text might be a bit small to read, the whakapapa of Timataiaho. It shows the diagram and all the pieces and how they interconnect. <coughs> and it's well worth going online and exploring. This is also a page from the Timataiaho. Acknowledging early childhood as a beginning with children being confident and curious learners and then through the phases of the curriculum. It will be interesting to see whether when Te Aho is in final form, whether the, the tables in Te Whariki need updating or whether they still work given that the learning areas and the key competencies will still be there in the new curriculum. It's an exciting time in education and not only do we have the new school curriculum, there's also the gazetting of Tafariki. So in April this year, there was a new notice um, about the parts of Tafariki that are now mandatory. And this now includes the learning outcomes. If you go online and explore, you will see that centres are required to meet the new standards in May next year. There's quite a lot of thinking to do about which document or which part of the document centres will choose to use. Also at this moment in time, we're exploring the common practice model, which was released in draft form recently. You can see here that Tafariki is referenced alongside the New Zealand curriculum as being part of the what to teach and the common practice model being the how to teach. The actual document here, the Common Practice Model, doesn't say a lot about early childhood, and that's because, for us, the Common Practice Model really will come through in the Core Fiti Pai resources. So you can see here a note from the online materials saying that we're working with Kayako on Core Fiti Pai to strengthen formative assessment and teaching practice for foundational learning in Tafariki. So the common practice model will guide teaching and learning appropriate at different phases of learning with different components such as Core Fiti Whakapai for early learning that are to be within the bicultural, inclusive and holistic framework of Tafariki. So where to from here, 30 years on? I'd love to be with you and able to discuss some of these ideas and points and other things that I'm sure have come up through the day. But I wanted to finish with a few questions to ponder on. What might the changes to the school curriculum mean for links with Tafariki? Are we ready for the May 2024 changes arising from the gazetting of Tafariki's learning outcomes? And how will the core Fiti Pai resources be embedded into Tafariki? I hope you have some good discussions and I look forward to talking with some of you some more about these issues and more that has come up through the day. For now, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.